I'm sitting here being interviewed and I hear Roland <laughs> screaming for joy. So it's a happy joy. But I want him to have a voice. He's screaming, screaming for happiness, but at the same point, a child would be saying, this is so funny, or push me higher on the swing, or can you splash more water in my face? Yeah, you really splash me. Or can you throw the ball Yay, to me? Woo. And he just doesn't have those words. My name is Jeannie Edgerton Warburton, and my son's name is Roland. Little Rolly's coming out. Jamie and I absolutely adore him. <laughs> Is a lot of fun to be around. About somebody all day. <laughs> Can be challenging at times. He's been diagnosed with a neurodevelopmental disorder called ADMP syndrome. It was a lot for Jamie and I to wrap our, our heads around that we had a child who had this very rare disorder. Jamie reached out and learned about the Seaver Autism Center. So at that point, we contacted them, set up a meeting. Jamie and I met with Dr. Joe Buxbaum and some other people at the Seaver Autism Center to talk about ADMP syndrome. And we kind of just hit the ground running. Here, keep your phone. The phone, we, we only ever have the phone because have a good day at school. I mean, everything is a consideration. And with a typical kid, you don't even think about would it be important to have fruit with breakfast or fruit in the afternoon. But when you have a child who has kind of a gut biome that's compromised, there's a lot of thinking about. Um, making sure he doesn't go to the, have a bowel movement at night. And it's fine, obviously, if he does have a bowel movement at night, but it just means it's uncomfortable for him. And he will wake up and changing him, and then it's hard to go back to sleep. We are working with Team Roland, um, which is our home-based team, on trying to meet his needs as best we can. Here is Roland's schedule. Roland has OT three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for 45 minutes. And Roland is lucky enough to have speech five days a week. And then Roland has physical therapy two days a week. And then obviously Lisa works with him. We've created a little classroom. What's your name? Roland. Roland, very good. Roland, put your name up. Good boy. And how old are you? Eight. We work on What's participating, so imitation. Today? We work on cognitive skills. We work on fine motor skills. We work on hand-eye coordination. We work on balance, jumping. We work across the gamut. It's a privilege to have Lisa work so closely with him. And they have an unbelievable relationship. And he's extremely affectionate towards her. When he was younger, I took him out more because he was easier for me to handle. But as he's gotten older, um, I think it's, it's been harder for me to take him out. For example, we'd be taking him to a museum. Sometimes people will make comments and sometimes not be so friendly. He gets frustrated and engages in maladaptive behaviors at times. For example, swiping food off of a table, or sometimes pinching or slapping, or frustration because he's having a hard time trying to communicate his wants and needs. Most of those behaviors are what we would call communication-based. By refusing to get up and come, um, he's demonstrating that he's not ready. And this is a good thing, that he chooses to remain there. It demonstrates progress with self-regulation skills. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Go ahead. Go, you jump. Die yourself or you want mommy? And, you know, there is a level of anxiety and stress when you have a child with a disability, especially a very rare syndrome. 
I really don't have the best relationship with Roland, and I see his relationship um, with other people like Lisa and other providers where he's very affectionate, and we don't have that affectionate relationship, and that's something that I would love to gain with him. I remember having anxiety when he was about to have his infusion, and I was thinking, how on earth is he gonna have that needle in his arm for 45 minutes to an hour? It's just not possible. And sure enough, he was compliant and was in Lisa's arms with Dr. Collibson. So better understanding ADNP syndrome and developing treatments specifically in ADNP syndrome may also help us develop treatments in autism more broadly. There will inevitably be some overlap between kids with ADMP syndrome and kids with idiopathic autism. And as we can define what that overlap is, we'll be able to identify subsets of kids with idiopathic autism that seem to be similar to ADMP syndrome and then apply the treatments that we've developed in ADMP syndrome to those kids with idiopathic autism. So it really has a huge impact on the entire autism community. Every child on the spectrum deserves to have the level of care um, and consideration, the evaluations, the recommendations, the support. Seaver doesn't just treat, they offer both the environmental piece or evaluations and recommendations as well as the biological piece. And we're happy to continue working with them um, to try to come up with all different treatments for kids with ADMP syndrome. Roland does have a lot of fun swimming. He also likes jumping. And he really likes when all the family swim together. Jamie and I really hope for treatments to make his life better, to help him speak. And it's not just for Roland. We hope that there can be treatments for all children with the syndrome because we care deeply about other children with ADMP and we care deeply about their families. 